I got one more example of this to go over before I uh, hit you up. So let's do i to the 31st. Now, if you guys remember, all right, we talked about i representing equal to the square root of negative 1. Now, some of you, when I said, what's i squared, some of you looked at me like, I have no idea what i squared is. And some of you automatically remembered, oh, i squared is equal to negative 1. Well, how do we know i is i squared is equal to negative 1? And how are we ever going to figure out what i to the 31st power is? All right? OK. So the first thing is, how do we even get to i squared anyways? Well, if I want to get to i squared, that means I'm going to multiply i times i, correct? Which means I can multiply square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Right? Which essentially means I have i squared equals the square root of negative 1 squared. And the square root of something squared, so therefore, i squared equals negative 1. Does everybody see that? So we say i equals the square root of negative 1 i squared equals negative 1. Now, let's multiply. Yes? Um, yes, but remember, before you've been doing that, by using your order of operations, remember your order of operations. If you're before you even multiply this, you're taking the square root of squaring. So those can't, those operations undo each other. So you don't even ever square that number because you're taking the square root of it. OK? So therefore, I have i squared equals negative 1. Now, to move to the next one, how am I going to get to i cubed? Well, let's kind of move up the rank. So if I did i cubed, what that means is I need to multiply by i again. Right? Right. So what's i times negative 1? negative i. So therefore, we can write down in our notes, which we already did, i cubed equals negative i. Then let's multiply it again. So let's multiply by i again. And then what I get is i times i cubed is i to the fourth, which equals a negative i squared. Now we remember what i squared was, right? i squared equals negative 1. But now this is a negative i squared. So it's going to be i to the fourth equals a negative negative 1, which i to the fourth now equals positive 1. So we have to do this 31 times? Yes, you do have to do this 31 times. Unless you want me to show you the shortcut. 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 All right, fine. No, I don't. So i to the fourth equals positive 1. All right, now. Let's continue on. Let's pretend. Emma wanted to see it 31 times, so we might as well do it to 31 times. Just kidding. So let's go and see what. Let's do it one more time, and we'll notice a pattern. Trust me. Ne it's negative i squared, and i squared is negative 1. Huh? I don't know. Let's try it. So let's multiply by i again. So if I multiply by i. What you guys notice is I, um, that becomes i to the fifth equals i times 1, which is i. And what do we say i represents? Square root of negative 1. So what we notice, ladies and gentlemen, i to the fifth equals the square root of negative 1. So what we have is a module of mathematics. We are repeating after we go through. Um, after we go through up to four, up to our uh, exponent of four, so we start repeating the cycle, Emma. All right. So it's important for you guys to see that. So what we want to do is, if I want to see what is i to the thirty-first, I want to see where am I going to be on the cycle. So what the best the way to do this is to say, see here is you're going to be. You guys can take these as kind of like your exponents. So i is really to the first power. This is to the second power, third power, and really. To the fourth power, it's really to the fourth power, or we can write to the zero as an exponent. So what I'm going to do is I want to see what I'm going to do is um, you could do i to the fourth would be one cycle, right? I to the eighth would be your next cycle, right? So you're just going to keep on going and adding and adding every single one of cycles. Yes. So it was at i to the eighth again, just one. Huh? 
Huh? Well, i to the fourth is one, right? Then i to the eighth is one, right? So that's just repeating your cycle and over and over. So you can keep on adding that, but how do we do how do we do repeated addition? Multiplication. Multiplication. And I don't really want to do multiplication, but what I can do is I can just do divide in and see what the remainder is. So I want to see how many times my how many times the cycle divides into 31. So how many times does this cycle of 4 divide into 31? 7, Seven times. Cuz you do 31. You guys remember or so you could say 7 divides into 31. I'm sorry. 4 divides into 7, 31 seven times, right? You don't need to do long division. But you guys can see there's a remainder of 3. Whatever your remainder is, is going to be your exponent. So therefore, since I have a remainder of 3, my exponent is i cubed. Therefore, I can write i to the 31st is equal to i cubed which is equal to negative i. So the main important thing, guys, the way I just like to do this in kind of a shortcut, is whatever you have a higher exponent in, divide it by 4 till you get it to see if you have a remainder, whatever or to your closest number that you'll get a remainder. Once you have a remainder, your remainder is going to be this number. If you have a remainder not greater than 4, that, mean you, you, that means you can divide another element of 4 into there, right? If you have a remainder of 0, that's going to represent i to the 4th. Then that would just, it's the same thing, but just under 1 they'd be dealing with. You'd do the same thing. Well, what is a negative power? I'll tell you in a different video. Right.